Good morning, my name is Ray Osman. I have uh, flown in from Seattle today to attend wow. the, the uh, Academy meeting because uh, I don't see any of my end of the country. Um, I am actually trying to navigate my first VA claim and I am on day 378, which I know for a lot of the people here is very young in, in the claim world. Yeah, you're um, a pop. <laughs> Um, but my doctors had diagnosed me, actually told me that I developed kidney cancer in my 40s, uh, found it uh, in my early 50s, uh, and when they pulled it out and, and looked, examined it, they said it was a kind of a rare form of kidney cancer as well. But uh, in good faith, I started the process. Um, I first found out on social media, um, came up on a feed, I started reading it, watched the documentary, um, started doing research, and that's how I kind of found out about everything. I was a little upset, Paul said, uh, my senator's office, Senator Crowder Murray, and uh, she said, you know what, the VA is going to consider every claim that gets put in. They're going to examine every condition that you, you know, you put in for, no matter how many days you're there, please pursue it. So I started pursuing it, and I found out that the VA process is much harder to navigate than it says on their website. And um, as I went through there, uh, and th through the process, I started working with the uh, Disabled American Veterans out of the Seattle Regional VA office. And um, they are to the point now where they're telling me that something else needs to be done with my claim, even though I do not have yet a, a denial or a grant. But they're, they're monitoring, right? And they're looking at the SME opinions. And they're saying that your SMEs are coming back with uh, a negative opinion against you. So I'm here basically to question the SME program again. And I know from reading the notes of the CAP meetings every time, it appears that um, this issue gets brought up every single time. Wait, 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 you got kidney cancer? Yes, sir. You should not be subjected to a, any SME process. Not anymore. Yeah, I'm surprised. So, um, what? Hold on, there's also other conditions, okay? So I provided the VA with everything that they needed. They didn't have to research anything. All they had to do with, was get SME opinions according to everything that I've seen so far. When did you file? Uh, April 15th of last year. 2017? Correct. After the presumptive went into effect. Uh, March, yeah, in March, the presumptive went into effect, and it is, um, kidney cancer is considered a presumptive disability. So, after this meeting, um, I want to go over with you and look it up and see what's going on and try to see how we can help. Okay, but I do have some questions regarding the SME program. After listening last night, um, I want to know how much weight is given to an SME opinion versus my own medical doctor's opinions. Can the VA address that? Now, I know you said it's equal playing field, but according to the VA Office of Integrity and, um, I forget what the actual name is, uh, up until 2016, you had a 95.7% denial rate of all uh, campuses claims. And so, if that's the case, I'm wondering how these are getting denied. If we have doctor's opinions, and you have an SME opinion, if they're weighted the same, the benefit of the doubt should go to the Marine, but it's not. So tell me how much they're weighted. So uh, if, I, if I can take a step better and ask you, uh, what Dr. Dyson has to say about the SME opinions as well. Um, so first and foremost, we weigh all evidence to include medical evidence in making those decisions, and we are not, we do not give more weight to the VA medical opinion unless it's a reconciling opinion between two conflicting pieces of medical evidence would we have that type of a, of, of a additional opinion on, on top of what your doctor has said. I will say this, that prior to March 2017, we did not have these presumptives in the law. We didn't have these um, presumptive disabilities in which we could grant the service connection except on a direct service connection basis. So at that time, these presumptives are not, uh, we do not require an opinion for these specific eight presumptives um, for those conditions. And that's one of the um, reasons why I'm, I'm asking to, to talk with you after this. And, um, but the, the weighing of the evidence is 
if the evidence generally is um, in equipoise across the claim, we should be resolving it the, in favor of the veteran. That's, that's the reasonable doubt rule that is in law that we generally apply. But um, I, I would like to talk to you a little bit more about your particulars because we don't just take the VA examination over your doctor's examination. It's an examination by a certified physician regardless of whether it's in the community or within the VA. Well, how many in that same vein of your statement? Yes. How many veterans claims who have nexus letters from their attending physicians or specialists, such as oncologists, have been approved. Sir, I don't have that, those numbers uh, with me, uh, and I'm uh, not I, sure. I can tell you, zero. Because the SMEs, who aren't even specialists, are actually questioning the veterans' own physicians. Okay, and I'm going to make a comment since I'm flown from Seattle, and so I'm going to take my time if you don't mind. Um, you know, my I I went to my doctors; they gave me positive nexus letters. Okay, um, my nephrologist, I have a damaged bile duct as well that they say is associated with the chemicals that can't resume, even though it's not on the list. But I filed for that as well. Got a positive nexus letter from the liver doctor. Um, but I, I took all my stuff and I went to an occupational and environmental doctor and I said, would you please put all this together for me? Now, I know this sounds immature, but I think my doctor's credentials are better than your doctor's credentials. Um, my doctor um, got his initial degree in chemistry, went on to get his PhD in organic chemistry. He was an army clinical chemist before he went to medical school, went to Georgetown, got his medical degree, and then he went on basically to, um, you know, to do chemistry and toxicology studies, and um, that's his area of emphasis. He's an independent medical examiner. He's, he teaches at the University of Washington in two different departments. Um, he's, on, he's a fellow of the American College of Occupational and Environmental Medicine. And his credentials go on and on, but he, he has a PhD in chemistry as well as his MD. He ruled, he ruled in my favor in a more probable than not nexus letter. And still when I go in and the, my, the, the, my BSO looks at my file, they're still coming against me um, despite the credentials and everything in my nexus letter. So I have four, actually, then the VA sent me to a uh, CMP exam. The CMP exam doctor ruled in my favor, but then the VA said he's not authorized to give a subject matter expert opinion in this case. So I have four nexus letters in my favor, and it's still right now coming out against me. So I'm, I'm questioning when you say you have the 40 hours of highly intense training for the SMEs, I'm not real confident that 40 hours is doing it. And, you know, it's like you guys are saying that a teacher, an elementary teacher in New York, can give a report card to a high schooler in Seattle, and because he's reviewed his file, that's sufficient to give him a report card. That's how the SME program seems to be working. That some doctor across in Podunk, Idaho, can pull up my file and say, no, you don't have cancer, or you don't, this cancer is not connected to the Marine Corps, and he hasn't even looked at me. He hasn't examined me. He hasn't touched my body. He hasn't done anything but looked at a file. And I question whether he's really read my entire file. And I, I just, I don't think he's really read I'm sorry for people behind you, but. Um, I don't know if there's really anything they can respond to at this point. Um, I would like to know, is there a list, you have a list of uh, presumptions, and you have a list of the 15 conditions, but is there a list that you provide your doctors in training that's like the no list? Is there a list of, um, we don't really take these, these particular conditions. Is there any such list, sir? No, there is, there is no list. Now, the training, first off, as you heard this 
science is very complex. And so the whole basis of the examiner's, um, I guess, report is to be able to make a reasonable discussion one way or the other. They try their best to support the veteran. I know that sometimes it seems uh, like that may not be the case, but they really do. The, the training that we give does not state that there's a, a single, except for the presumptions, a single no or a single yes. You know, the training that we provide are here are the, the history, here are the conditions that are known to be caused by these chemicals, uh, here is the literature that is out there, and it's up to look at each case on an individual case-by-case -case basis. What does become complex in these uh, are, are, are twofold. One is, I hear your argument about uh, the experts that you have, and you have some excellent experts, and it's nice to hear that the VA opinion was the same. So I think that no, this the VA opinion, the SMB opinion, is not the same. The contract doctor before the SMB was the same. But your your doctors are not coming back with the same as mine. So, so it would be fun to look at those and to see the arguments. Well, it would be educational to, to look at and see the, the argument. Um, I, I think what it comes down to is how how well it's supported or not supported based on science. And you will see some individuality with that. And so I think the the nature of the discussion is important. Now, one thing that I would point out, although you did have some some excellent um, some folk, excellent folks that were doing some opinions for you, you know, keep in mind though that a person's qualifications, while important, uh, I think even more important is the argument that they put down on paper to be able to support it. So it goes back to the to the fund of. Are you saying the rhetoric? What are you saying? What do you exactly mean by that? If you don't mind. Their citations, what literature they're able to use to uh, support uh, their uh, own argument. I want to jump in here for a second. I, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Ray Osman. Ray, okay, I've talked to you on Facebook. Yes. First of all, to quote something out of Saving Private Ryan, that is griping at its finest. I cannot remember the exact quote, but you have put together something that has meaning here. And I appreciate you coming out from Washington to do that and talk today. You mentioned you went to a medical occupational specialist. Yes, sir. How much did you pay to have that done? Or did you have to? I didn't have to. They went through my insurance, actually. Okay, so you, your insurance company. Sure. Somebody, Sorry, but somebody paid it, but I don't know how much. My, my point is, you. this is a step you took above and beyond. Yes. Okay. And to get a separate opinion above my own personal doctors, I didn't know this doctor. I just had to find an expert that could put it all together for me. But taking this time and going out outside the process to get your own specialist to do a review, in this case, your insurance company paid for it. Um, I've, had, I've talked to other people that have done the same, and they shelled out anywhere from $500 to $3,000 to have an opinion like that created, okay, or a review. Um, Cancer is not a poor man's disease. Uh, I pretty much went bankrupt trying to treat for myself. We don't have the resources to go out and hire our own hired guns or what have you, and it's not fair. But the you know, people they can cite good things. Uh, Apparently, it's who can cite the best things. Yeah, it's yeah, it, and that's kind of what it boils down to. But before you go, Ted, I would like to Jerry and I want to talk to you uh, about this a little further, but. Do you have anything in writing from the VA as far as denial letters? No, it, it's still in process. Okay. But, but you, you do have an SO, SME opinion? In my C file there is, because my BSO is the one telling me what it's saying. Okay, they're looking at it and saying, you know what? Can it's you get your hands on it? I don't think Yeah, they, request a copy. Of I don't know if they will give it to you until you die. Or well, it'll, it'll, after your appearance here today, it'll probably freaking disappear. <laughs> well, and actually, to be honest, I got a call from Louisville because they said that some of my forms had disappeared uh, electronically, um, and that's what triggered some of my investigation because he said, you know, if we, we have the SME opinion back, 
wouldn't really tell me, you know, kind of gave me the, the shuffling, so I called my VSO at the same time, found out it was negative, but he said that uh, uh, you, you, we didn't even know you had these Nexus letters in your file. Okay, now that had been after 325 days of having my file, they had not read those, so he had to reflag them, send them back for another SME opinion, which still came back as negative. So, anyway, sir, to your comments, um, you said that it's all about how you write it. Um, the disabled American veterans knew that I was coming to this panel, and he said, I would, raise, I would advise you to raise the fact that you have provided extensive research and medical opinions with sound rationale that spoke to your disabilities and how they related to the circumstances of your service exposure at Camp Lejeune. Um, I would also submit to your panel that it is a waste of taxpayer money to develop a claim for the express purpose of denying the claim, which is what it's looking like in your case. You can then inform them about the rule considering the benefit of the doubt rule. And, you know, when, when my DSO, who, you know, helps tons of, you know, military personnel, comes and starts telling me, call your senator, do something about it, you know, flags are going up for me. And I, 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 I just, I'm here to confront the SME opinion. Who is in charge of the SME doctors? Is it one of you on the panel? It, it, it is I. Okay, sir, so, so you no, personally... Not for VHA, not for the contract. Not for the contract side, okay. Um, you personally should be held responsible for this, sir. I, if, if this does not get corrected, we should be coming after your job. Because you've heard this from the panel several times, over and over again, because I've read it in the documents, that there's a problem with this program. And you, sir, need to fix it. It's unethical. It's, it's unethical, yes, sir. Okay, I'll let my fellow Marines have a chance. Oh, I, may, I may be back up. Hey, we, we gave, I gave you both Mike and my cards. I underlined my direct email address on there. I want to hear from you. Okay. And Ray, one quick, um, you mentioned social media. Where did you first hear about this? It was actually a Facebook feed. Um, it was about a CBS News report. And I clicked on it, and that's how it triggered. Otherwise, I never would have found out about it. And by the way, I've met with your senator, Patty Murray, because she used to be the, the chairman of the VA committee. Yes, sir. I testified before her committee. Yeah, usually, unfortunately, you get the interns in the office before you get anybody. Yeah, well, don't accept that. <laughs>